Alrighty, how you guys doing out there? All right. Um, just like I said in the earlier um, video, um, I did work on the 17 inch uh, CRT uh, monitor from Apple, the blue and white one. I uh, finally got the um, the fly back for it. Sadly enough, found out later that I, that I had a bit of an issue uh, when it comes to the picture itself. Um, it was literally just firing up just fine until 15, roughly about 10, 15 minutes later, it started to go super dark. The center I had a dark spot in it and becoming like super bright and it does its cycle all over again and again. So find out later, which I should have known better, uh, but right in this area, I'll show it to you once all this is taken apart. Right in this area, uh, get some sort of a dark goo around the capacitors. And I should have known better because I knew that one of them actually wasn't working and believe this one does. So what we'll do is uh, we'll just literally take this little guy uh, and we'll put it into the CRT screen uh, monitor. So we'll take the other screen apart. I'm kind of limited on how I'm going to be showing this to you guys because this is a pretty big screen. And I'm kind of a little bit tight for, t uh, for space. But what we'll do is on each side we'll be peeling this guy out. So, and it comes straight up. Now, do not pull actually all the way up here, because there's a tiny little clip that sits here, so you're gonna be pushing it upward. And nothing goes. All the screws are exposed. Remember, it's plastic, so it'll go easy. Taking it off is not, too, it's not an issue. Putting it back in there, I recommend actually you do it manually with no power tools. It's just easier. If you do have some magnets, highly recommend it. Few screws, I think there's six, so there will be one here, one here, uh, three, four, five, and six. And we'll go ahead and remove it. Magnus is your friend. Just like that. Uh, six other Phillips screws to remove. So we got two here. Now I can show it to you. Four and six. We'll go ahead and remove it. Those are plastic, so be very kind to them. Old. And we have to go and fish this cable out of the way. There's a bunch of little plastic clips around. There's lots of little clips here, so just be careful when you take them off. And there will be another one here. There you go. There. And fish a cable all the way out. Um, now we'll be removing a couple of shield. There's three pieces. There's one on this side. There's the big one here we're going to be taking out first. And a two on the side here, which is going to be this guy and this guy. So there are fine thread screws for this guy, so I have to remove these first. So 
there's two. That one's a bit of a bummer. not coming up no it is I did say magnet is your friend so there's a little metal clip here that you can just take a you know like a flathead screwdriver or a blade but you can use your use your thumb if you can maybe not because that's a little bit painful I'll do the same on the other side. And then we can easily just, I'm not gonna say easily, but we will take them out. There you go, that's one and two. There you go. You can see that a brand new cable here. So this is obviously the brand new uh, flyback. And there's a safety precaution. I don't want you guys to actually just touch straight the um, this piece here. So you have to be very careful uh, when you work in this area. And I'll show you the procedures for as long as you do have, um, you know, a rubber handle screwdriver, alligator clip, and a plastic spudger so you can actually move that little boot so we'll just do this right now so a good frame a good chassis a good ground rubber handle because obviously it's not it's an insulator And then we'll do this. And then expose the uh, the metal contact and just literally do spiky spiky. But it didn't do it, so which is a good thing because capacitors are supposed to be doing the discharge after powering down, so it, it is working the way it should be working. So now I'll take the boot and just literally just pinch or squeeze these guys out if I can. There you go. That's all there is to it. All done. These guys on each side. And you're going to have roughly about three of those little screws. So you got one on top here, two and three with a ground wire. Make sure you actually disconnect these guys. So they're gonna be one side. They're all the same anyway, which is actually pretty good. So we don't have to struggle as of where do they go? And for the ground. Whoops. And it does have some kind of a little, you won't see because the screwdriver power tool is in the way. So you do have a little lip here. So it just literally just slides in there and that's basically it to it. So there's also a little bit of a groove. So there's only one way to put it on there, as you can see. So there's only one way to put it on there. And then unclip the wires and voila, one. So let's do the ground first. That wire is just literally, that cable is just literally in the way. There you go.
You don't go in there. There you go. Tool recommended. I'll show it to you in a bit. Um, they are stupid handy. Um, but I'll show it to you as we progress, as we go along. And one of them actually, which I bump into this kind of issue, and I'll, and I'll show it all to you. So this is two. All in due time, but the tool that I got for these guys are just like stupid handy. And it just makes a world of difference when it works to, especially those antique or vintage um, um, CRT monitors. And I'll show you why. Uh, I do have a desoldering pump and it is like stupid handy when it comes to this big, huge uh, little pins, those little legs, in order to suck literally all the, um, the resins out of the way. Instead of using the manual one, which is going to take you forever to actually, you know, take them out because you do have quite a few to actually take care of. So uh, if you do have a pump, that would be stupid handy. Uh, if you don't, um, I'm sorry to say, but uh, yeah, the the um, the old one, the manual one, might probably do the trick. I'm not sure. I haven't tried on my end, uh, but it might probably take a little bit of a while to actually just remove all this. If you don't, uh, just try to remove as much as you can with a wick. Uh, that would be the best bet, and uh, that's basically hope for the best. Two uh, big ones that needs to be removed from the plastic in order to remove the entire panel off. So you get one here. <clears throat> and this will get it right here. You could use the screwdriver, uh, the, the power tools, but I try to stay away from it from plastics as much as I can. Now there's a degauss for the brown cable. We'll just remove it. There's a degauss also for the black cable. I'll just remove it straight from the tube neck. Now we can easily just, uh, actually we'll just wait uh, just a little bit. Uh, we'll do one more thing. We'll remove the two screws on top here. In the meantime, this is gonna remove the ground, so gonna free this little guy and two so this guy is free now we can remove the uh, the board by wiggling it just a little bit. Hopefully you guys see it. And if it goes. Uh, this is the issue. I'm going to show it to you in a bit here. Let's move up a little bit. Okay, so the problem that we have here is um, when it comes uh, the factory one, the OEM from Apple, it comes with orange. And the flyback actually that came with when I bought it uh, didn't come with this little plug here. So I was able to salvage the other one and solder that cable um, and reuse the same um, clip. So just follow the trace from this when it runs to the pot from the brightness and the two focus. And it runs from the bottom all the way up to the top. That sits actually where this guy just came out. So whenever you actually take it out, just make be aware of where the cable goes. Um, obviously, uh, we got a, a white and a red one. A factory from Apple. This was supposed to be a, this is red and white from Apple. The uh, flyback that I got had to be reversed because if you actually just do it with the red and the white. Even if you try to focus it, it will still be out of focus. So you're easily just able to clip this out and reverse it 
and the focus actually once it's all adjusted properly it's just amazing it works like a charm what you have to do here there's a tiny little um press a uh, tab because now you can't do anything so if you press it it will come straight up so again this is red and white so this guy is free now okay so there will be two things actually we're going to be doing um first we're going to be taking this little guy you know disconnecting it there's only one way in we'll be disconnecting this guy which is going to be on a p702 go ahead and remove it two one actually that's got some sort of a heat shield or a um, shrink tube on it there's a black one at p706 we'll actually remove remove it and p705 which is because i can't show you the picture or show you exactly where it's at or just give you the location so red is p705 and we'll just remove it and then next is right by p802 which i believe is all where the buttons are to control the the, uh, the screen so i just squeeze it that one's a little bit harder though there you go and off it goes okay so this is the problem that we have right by the heat sink i don't know if you can see it you can see all that black goo by the capacitor and i believe this is what the problem is because that shouldn't be there okay so there's a few screws in there that needs to be taken care of one of them requires actually to remove the shield here but there's one screw phillips actually sitting here and you've got these little guys you got the gold one on each side you got a gold one with a big flat washer sitting here be too hasty so that one's actually also the ground and it does have a tiny little lip in there so it sits right in here so it's actually pretty easy so and there's only one way in or that holds the entire bracket so one of them is just by the power plug here or the uh, uh yeah anyway the power plug so you got one here two three and four by the flyback and we'll go ahead and remove it I do apologize for the odd angle. Where's my friend? So there's only three actually that hold the entire bracket here. There's the fourth one I was talking about actually holds the board. That's not for the bracket, so. Don't forget, these type of screws are only for ground. Or have I now? And then once all this is done, we've got two more to take care of, which is these two here. There you go. So now we can move it around a little bit. I'll just disconnect the, uh, the power cable. We got a little bit much more flexibility. One here by the fuse. I'll just tell you where roughly they are. So obviously I've got a weird angle with my the camera. So you got one by the fuse. You got one by the heat sinks. Uh, heat sink, sorry, not too far from the flyback. All right, so we got one by the big transformer and a capacitor, which is the uh, gold flat washer screw. 
and I'll do everything manual on this end because I don't want to damage anything even though the board is fried I don't care so we got this guy and a two gold one one by wherever it says E and the other one by the um, Q721 Now here comes a little tricky part. That's gonna be. I know my. You might probably just say something about this. I know they're pretty fragile, and I know it's plastic. Um, but I've got a higher success on literally just moving the board. So now there's a four little clips. Hopefully you guys see it. But there's four little clips. There's two here, and two on the other side by where the flyback and the heat shield is, which is in that right in this area. You can squeeze it, but not too hard because you don't want to break it, of course. Because you're going to need that little guy there. So I just pull it upward a little bit. Now you can see it's lifting. And we're so close now. There you go. And it moves straight up. So obviously when you put it back in there, we'll have to go in first and then put the board back in there. And voila. So we're keeping this guy. That guy's in far better shape because at the bottom, you can easily just remove these guys, right? So it just slides right out. And that's a, basically another little piece of plastic. And bingo. That's all there is to it. Pretty easy. But sometimes in one of them, just like I worked on before, this guy was missing and that actually hold your, I would just call it the pedestal. Your little, you're literally the, the base of your monitor. So if it's broken, you're gonna be missing one screw for this. So all you have to do is put it, flip it. So we put a mess. And there's a tiny little groove in here that sits in there. And make sure the plastic tabs actually do sit in there too. And then we'll do this. And it slides in there. So that's the bottom piece is Literally, that's all there is to it. It just slides in, slides out, easy peasy. Um, here comes the fun. That one is cool. Oh yeah, that's right, it's over here. All right. That one is awesome. If you can't get it, get it. That is just an awesome tool. So we'll turn it on, and I've got somewhat a big tip on it. So obviously this is gonna be the perfect ideal um, tool in order, in order to be able to remove the, or suck all the, uh, the solder out of there. So all of this, it's gonna be removed. I'm just gonna wait until it warms up. So it's set up at high. Uh, sadly enough, if you put it too high for the temperature, it will actually remove or take one of those little pads out if it's too hot. So be careful on the temperature. If you do use it, don't stay there for too long. Or else you remove the pad in which is what happened with the other board. Do this and suck it. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love tools. Now there's a four, uh, I believe there's a three or four places where they've got a metal uh, ring in there where they're riveted inside the board. So those are going to be like, just like this guy here, they're going to be a bit of a pain to actually suck all that, um, that resin or whatever straight out. So I know there's one here and this one here, there's one here and there's another one here. So um, when you first take them out, they're gonna be a bit of a pain to actually remove that resin. But the fact that I already worked on it, it's not an issue here on this end. This tool. So this is 
Rivet three. You don't have to do this all in the first try, right? Because you can easily just come back. Because this is gonna not gonna be perfect. It's not gonna suck everything out, especially when it comes to the uh, the rivet part of it, which is the final one here. Whoops. Trigger happy. Once all this is done, we can say there you go. There you go. All done. See how long did it took? Like two minutes. I'm just going to have a quick look here as of where they're going to go. There you go. In place. All right. And yes, you will see that one, one actually has got a missing pad, which is this guy. But it's not even connected to anything. So like this guy is not, I'll just show it to you really quick here. This guy is not connected to anything, neither is this guy. So now let's solder it. We're just going to do a few. I no longer have that overhead camera anymore. I'm bumping through some issues with uh, with some of the uh, little capture card. But I will definitely get a new camera pretty soon, so. That one doesn't have enough. There you go. You need a good solder joint on there, or else it's not going to cut it. Like a beautiful little dome shape. That's beautiful. Not bubbly, not a bubble shape. But this guy, uh, I don't know, just for shit and giggles, I'm just going to put it on there so it doesn't move. Doesn't make any difference though. Those have got the rivets in there, I think you might as well just double check it's done. There, you know, pointy little guy, go in there, there you go. And the last one. Whoop, no, it's not done right. Let's all see the gap in there, see the hole. That's a no-go. There you go. So this guy is a bit funky. I'll just double check those inner rivets. There you go, I think we got her. And I think we are done. All right, let's bring you over here. There you go. Over here. And what we'll do is I'll slide this little guy in there. Now it's actually slide. And we can't just want to make sure we're not going to pinch any cables along the way. 
And all we have to do is clippity clip. Clip, clip, and clip. All in place. Those gold ones first. So again, those gold, there's one by E on each side. I told you, I'll take care of you guys. I'll show you. I don't know everything, but trying to explain as much as I can because I could have had an equipment failure. I could take a pictures, but pictures are kind of boring. I like taking a video of everything. So that big huge gold with a flat washer in it, you can't miss it as it goes right here. That big huge white circle in there, that's where it goes. And again, this is plastic, so don't go hard hardcore on it. You don't want to break it. Counterclockwise and screw them in place. You got another white one here. That's not the right one. You got one by the heat shield or the heat sink, sorry. Okay, I'm done with you now. And one for the outlet, the 120. Again, we'll just double check that we do have a good fuse because I would be ashamed to put everything together and all of a sudden it's like, oops, no juice. The fuse is good. That's something that we usually forget. So just don't want to forget that part. <laughs> all right, so now we just slide this little guy in there. You do have some kind of a little lip in there, so oh. yeah, it fell. Whoops. So one by the flyback. So nice time to put that little panel back in place. slack and then we'll do the two on this side that's gonna be pretty hard to do by showing you but there's two more by the uh, the cable number two once it's all tightened up we can actually just Tighten up everybody else. So let's do this little guy here. Obviously making sure that if you did disconnect the uh, the 120 here, make sure you put it back in there. It did happen to me. Get the ground. Metal, metal, I don't mind putting a bit, a bit of force on it. Uh, 
say ground, ground. This is my guy. I just want to make sure we're not going to pinch anything. So it's going to be at the bottom and the one on top. I'll tell you where you go. Where do they go? Alrighty. So red goes at 7.05. And the black goes at P706. Clip for this guy goes to, uh, that one's covered. It looks like, what did I say earlier? Anyway, it goes in there. Sorry for the bad angle. Okay, so we can use this guy and put it at P702. Next, we can put this little guy. There's only one way to actually put him on there. And I do apologize again for the bad angle. Now, we've got the black one that goes into that the board, which connects to the tube neck. So, for the black, can't really miss it. There's a groove for it, and the brown one for the degauss goes like some sort of a blue relay or a blue um, capacitor. And we got everything connected together, and we can say that we can that we can put board on a tube. Now we can use those plastic screws in there. There's a bit of a wiggle room here. Those clips can be a bit of a pain. I'll just twist it a little bit just to make sure they're in there. They are in there. Perfect. So this is good and this is good. Okay, let's do it. So that way my glasses properly. Because they're so close. This is far better. Oh look at that. Looks like we got it. That was my glasses. I wasn't wearing my glasses. That's what it is. Oh my god, I think we've got it. Look at this thing of beauty. We got it. That black goo on the board is what created this issue in the first place from 
having an issue with the board itself. So now what you're gonna be doing is putting everything back and you go this way. Okay, so we'll just put this little guy in there. Every single time I see a beautiful, happy finder on this beautiful monitor, it makes me happy. <laughs> 